In this installment of our Miss the Author series, we're going to be discussing the recent chapter of Leo Iqwes, Atheism in Southern Africa in the Cambridge History of Atheism. After the presentation that the author will make, we'll, we will begin on a Q and answer, a questions and answer uh, moment. Uh, so that you can say, uh, you can say it or you can write it on the chat. Uh, so I will introduce Leo now. Leo, Leo Igwe holds a bachelor in philosophy and a master in philosophy from the seat of Wisdom Seminary, Oweri, and the University of Calabar in Nigeria, and a doctoral degree in religious studies from the University of Beirut in Germany. He was a postdoctoral research fellow at the Department of, for the Study of Religions, Islam, African Publics, and Religious Values at the University of Cape Town, with research interest in witchcraft, atheism, non-religion in Ghana, Zambia, Kenya, and Nigeria. He is the author of A Virus Became God, the COVID-19 Pandemic and Religious Legitimacy Crisis in Africa, he says in the Philosophy of Humanism from 2022. Atheism in Southern Africa uh, in the um, Cambridge History of Atheism in 2021. This is the article we will be discussing today. And Human Flourishing Beyond Religion, Homosexuality and Atheism in Kenya from 2019. Uh, thank you, Leo, again for being here and I will leave you to it. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on in which part of the world you are. Thank you all for coming. Um, yes, yeah, the book chapter is on atheism in Southern Africa, and it just presents an, um, an overview you know, of this quite an interesting topic. And uh, that chapter has 11 sections, just very short sections. We have an introduction. Um, then there is uh, what I call indigenous traditions and incipient atheism. Uh, well, the word indigenous um, uh, is something I find very problematic, but I just could not know what else to say there. But otherwise, I would say pre-colonial uh, tradition and incipient atheism. Then uh, we, we discuss Ubuntu and uh, person-to-person -person cosmology. Then uh, we also look into how atheism is embedded in the anti-colonial anti apartheid movement and infidelity in foreign gods, uh, the influence of communism and socialism, then the codification of um, infidelity or atheism in Zambian humanism. Uh, we will now explore some contemporary manifestations of atheism, especially in the age of the internet, and then we will conclude. Um, in, discussing athe in discussing Africa, atheism is uh, rarely mentioned as part of the culture, as living, as alive in the region. Instead, there is an overwhelming uh, focus on theism and then the notoriety of religion or how notoriously religious Africans are as uh, noted by Mbiti. Parenda in Ido, uh, have no, also noted a strong link between traditional Africa and, uh, and theism. So, but, um, Occult Bitek takes exception to Mbiti's thesis, noting that Africans make a joke about gods and god ideas and, uh, and performances and they, and they ridicule deities and that discourses of ridiculing deities, they also abound. Yeah, but atheistic formations are diffused. And it's important, I think that scholars will have to uh, upon the, uh, explore why, why are they diffused? And, um, and I'm sure this is something I, I believe that uh, students of African religion will explore. So, but diffusion of atheism is mistaken to be absence. Hence the notion that atheism is alien to Africa <clears throat> or that, um, and that the diffused form of atheism also explains why we have not until maybe recently, atheistic groups, groups that are out there that identify as atheists. So at least that's what we know. Um, in the region, we, it was only recently that we have um, a groups that are coming out as atheists in Kenya or in Nigeria and in other places. Um, um, then it is, in, it is important to know that atheism is an English word, uh, although like religion, they may be lacking 
in, in many cultures, let's say in Southern Africa and in other places, but the sentiments of non-belief and the irreligion, uh, God critical sentiments, they also abound. Uh, uh, recent surveys have revealed uh, pervasiveness of, uh, of theism or theistic belief in, in, in Africa uh, at the Pew Research Center 2018. Uh, but countries in Southern Africa, such as uh, uh, South Africa, Botswana, also they show a significant percentage of non-religious non people, uh, atheist uh, or irreligious people. Now, but it is not just a recent thing, like I, I noted in that chapter, that in pre-colonial traditions, in what they call indigenous Africa, which is not in, in normal discourses associated with your religion or atheism, the um, atheistic sentiments are embedded and with skeptical thoughts or doubts, irreverence are expressed or encapsulated in indigenous religious and cultural experiences. But often they are overlooked, they are not emphasized. Sometimes in contesting the verdict of gods at shrines or, the, or at divinatory centers, and, um, and even though this is not an example from Southern Africa, but while I was doing my research in Ghana, uh, when people go to shrines and when the verdict is not, does not favor them, they will discard it, they will appeal it. They will tell you it's as a result of the manipulation of their other, the other party. And maybe they bribed the pre chief priest to say what he said. So those not favored by divinations, they make a jest of the pronouncements of the gods and god men and women. They make, uh, they make pronouncements you know, uh, informed by doubts and disbelief. They contest, they challenge, and they reduce some of these, uh, uh, the pronouncements of the gods and their divine um, uh, emissaries. Also in the chapter, uh, I try to draw attention to the concept of Ubuntu and the East person to person uh, cosmology. And uh, of, of note there is that Ubuntu talks, emphasizes on humanity, not divinity. Person to person, not person to a God relationship. So the, this cosmological outlook, therefore, it stresses who's the emphasis on, on, the, on human relationship, not relationship with God, as noted by uh, Mengana, Italia, Tutu, and Ramosi. They emphasize uh, here, human to human caring and sharing. Not God caring for the human, but human to human caring and sharing. They are unconcerned and indifferent to the idea of God and, and for them, uh, and within the concept of this embedded in the Ubuntu cosmology is a notion that precludes an active intervention or active operation of, of God in human relationships. Also, in, a, in another section on, in the chapter, I also uh, highlighted how infidelity, irreverence, irreligiosity, non-believing God is embedded in the anti-colonial or anti-apartheid movement because colonial movement, they, are not, they were not just secular. They are movements, the apartheid movement, a movement of gods, Euro-Christian gods that took hold in the region. So embedded in the struggle against this colonialism and appetite are also atheistic tendencies and proclivities, opposition, defiance, irreverence, disputation, and dismissal of these gods, the, the colonial gods and the gods of apartheid, and their powers, their powers and influence. And here I drew attention to that famous saying that uh, the white people, they came with the Bible, the, the black people had the land, and they said, uh, let us pray. And by the time they uh, opened their eyes, they had the land and they, and of course the white had the, uh, the white had the land and the and Africans they had the, or the black people they had uh, the Bible. So similar uh, uh, statements, similar propositions are also deployed, you know, against uh, the Arabic Islamic Mohammedan God and uh, religious formations. Uh, next in the chapter, I also looked at the influence of communism and, uh, and uh, socialism. So atheistic sentiments are also expressed within this movement uh, that swept across the region. The rationalist and atheistic ideas of Marxism resonated with many Africans. Yeah, even though you know, I, I, I met you know, some uh, people who call themselves socialists who might tell you, okay, maybe they are not atheists, 
but there were the, the, the communist, uh, uh, the socialist philosophy provided a framework and a platform for irreligious and God critical expressions and uh, performances. I uh, believe in God is seen uh, not to be in tandem with the proletarian struggle, the struggle of the masses against the bourgeois, bourgeois oppression and exploitation. Instead, divine reverence and associated performances are seen as, a, as an enablement of exploitation of the African masses. And there's always this saying by Karl Marx that religion is the opium of the people, which is often expressed to, uh, to underscore you know, um, how believing God you know, can make people docile and make them predisposed for exploitation. And we saw the, the, the codification of this um, socialist and God critical tendencies in, in, in um, Kenneth Kaunda's um, Zambian humanism, and uh, which embodies implicit criticism of religion and the gods and God believe. Uh, the principles of not devotion to God or prayer, but hard work, self-reliance, non-exploitation, of humans by humans, we are all embedded in the in the in the notion of Zambian humanism. So, but although the Zambian humanism proved um, ineffective as a national ideology, of course, following the collapse of Soviet Union and of course the emergence of uh, what one could call a unipolar world led by uh, the Christian West, uh, and then Zambia now fitted politically towards what it calls. Uh, a uh, Christian state or Christian theocracy. But however, currents of uh, atheism and non-belief, you know, uh, uh, persists, not just in Zambia, but in other countries across the region. So now in these contemporary forms, we have seen a growing number of, of people in Zambia, in South Africa, Namibia, and uh, Mozambique and other Southern African countries identify, you know, as atheists and non-believers. So surveys after surveys recently have shown that those who identify as, um, as atheists or non-believers or non-religious people are overwhelmingly, compared to other African countries like Nigeria and Ghana, we have them in 20% or, or more, 10% in Southern Africa, you know, compared to the situation in, in other parts of uh, the continent like in West Africa. So, but also reactions to the excesses of clerics and of God, men and women, reactions to the bizarre claims of pastors and bizarre um, uh, theatrics performances of, uh, of pastors and church members, including what was uh, noted sometime queer church members were made by their, uh, by their pastors to eat grass or drink ditto. Uh, there has also been responses to what they call commercialization of religion. So these costs of commercialization of religion, responses of commercialization of religions are often suffused with religion critical, God critical uh, 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 statements and propositions. And the most important aspect of, uh, of a contemporary atheism is also um, is, is expressed using the mechanism of the internet because the internet has um, helped in broadening the spaces for organization, for uh, connection, for sense of community, you know, across uh, within the atheist community in Southern Africa and beyond. So it has provided atheist um, um, uh, platforms, facilities for expression of themselves. Even though I must uh, say that uh, <laughs> for those of us following the events in Nigeria, uh, it has not actually been that uh, safe. It has still also been dangerous because um, this is not a Southern African case, but in Nigeria, we have a situation where um, a post was made on Facebook and the person who made this post uh, is in jail uh, as, as, as I speak. So, so yes, while the internet has brought facilities that broadened you know, the space, of oppression, sorry, the this, this space of um, expression and manifestation of atheistic ideas and thoughts. Uh, it has also come with its dangers and risks, you know, because of the fact that these places are still being policed uh, by religious um, uh, believers and uh, they try to get rid of what they think is offensive to them. So, but 
uh, we have seen on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, on the internet, we have websites of organizations um, that, are, uh, that, are, that are free thinking, that are atheistic, and uh, they are using those platforms to connect. Uh, for instance, the, the, the group in Zambia, they have their own Facebook, and they have been also trying to meet physically. Um, recently, I, I, I was in Cape Town and I met uh, my friend, my friends, um, Dean and uh, Bola Lang. I think they are uh, this program now. So it, we just got connected through the internet and it, it was possible for us to meet uh, and, um, and of course, uh, express that sense of fellowship and community. So internet has, you know, been uh, another facility that has also uh, provided or enhanced the presence of free thought uh, activists and organizations in the region. Now, in, in conclusion, atheism, like I said, is an emerging force to be reckoned with uh, in post-colonial Africa. And uh, as various strands of religious criticism are transforming into, um, into mechanisms to battle the various gods. So from subdued or incipient atheism that locks indigenous religious cultural uh, practices to the deity critical elements in Ubuntu and in socialist and communist movement and in the post-colonial religion critical discourses, atheism is changing the religious landscape and, uh, and also is, is, is changing this stereotype of Africa as magically oriented, religious, as a um, uh, 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 anti-secular or anti-reason, uh, uh, which is often the case when uh, the situation in Africa is discussed. So atheism is um, providing Africans who are dissatisfied with the dominant religions, including ex-Christians, ex-Muslims, and ex-traditionalists, alternative meanings and cosmologies, morality, fellowship systems. If in, um, in Western history, what applies is the saying by the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche that God is dead uh, in Southern Africa, and I think also is by extension other parts of the region, uh, it is uh, far from the death of God as an entity, uh, and the dead goes beyond the deity when it comes to um, when it comes to Africa, because there are waves of theistic formations. We have the Christian wave, we have the Islamic wave, we have the Hindus. Uh, we have other, uh, we have, of course, the indigenous uh, uh, theistic formations. All of them, you know, are coming into play. They're all playing out. But what happens there is that um, the dead now, of course, now go beyond the deity, like the Nietzschean <laughs> God is dead. So it is rather a case of um, the gods are dead. So ancient colonial, pre-colonial, disbelieving Africans, you know, have to contend with God, 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 sorry, has to contend with God's linked to centuries of encounter with the East and, uh, and with the West. So atheistic currents are sandwiched in waves of theism, indigenous, Hindu, Christian, Islamic, Baha'i, that wash over the continental landscape from the, from the Pacific uh, to the Atlantic coast. So that the old gods are either dead or dying, uh, and the new gods are reluctant to be born in the crucible of the anguish of the black body. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leo. That was extremely interesting. Uh, so I'm going to moderate the Q&A now. Uh, I think the best way to go is that you raise your hand and I will be letting you know. Uh, Nathan, I think you had, and Hannah, I saw you raising your hand. I don't know, Hina. Okay, we can go first. We can go with Bolang. I don't know if I pronounced it, your name correctly. Oh, no, it, it, it's pronounced perfectly. <laughs> uh, we, we see more and more people moving from uh, Christianity and Islam. Uh, but moving to what they call spirituality. And uh, I wonder what is causing that, because people seem to be losing hope in those uh, Ab Abrahamic religions, but uh, moving to back to the 
religion that they think that uh, was practiced by their ancestors. I wonder how Dr. Leo uh, Igwes sees it. Is it uh, a transition to a dropping beliefs at all, or is it is it going to be another problem that we are going to deal with in the future? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, if I get you correctly, there's a movement back to the traditional spiritualities. Yeah. Okay. So how do we explain that? Um, we can explain that severally. First of all, um, of course, I have. Uh, I, I, I have. Um, I was in a conversation with a Black American who also explained that there's that similar trend in the US uh, of um, Black Americans now, now trying to come back to start, in quote, worshiping the African gods. Um, well, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure all of us know that I wear two hats here. I'm not just uh, trying to do scholarship in terms of religion, I'm also an activist. So. Sometimes, uh, pardon me if I mix the two halves in the course of my explanation. So what I told him quickly was that, well, whether they worship uh, the African God or they, or they worship the Christian God, that it does not actually, of course, I spoke here normative, you know, he does not, it's God, it's still God that I worship him. But what happens there is that to explain it is that there is always need for people to move closer to what is aligned to their own uh, cultures. And um, it is, I think it's a quest of cultural connection, if you ask me. Um, like now, some people say they want to worship a God that looks like them. I don't want to go into that, whether a God looks like anybody, you know, and all that. So that might get me off the track. But what I'm trying to say here now is that um, there's always a quest of cultural connection. Like people, Richard Dawkins will tell you that he's a cultural Anglican. Okay, so there is there's a need for us to do certain things that resonate with our own cultural sense, sensibilities. I think that it's more of that. I don't think that it is um, more of, um, you could tease in per se, that they, they think that maybe the God has some kind of other reality, but it's like the cultural connection, they are more connected with this, uh, is the quest for that. I think that is what is, um, is driving it. But I'm thinking that at the end of the day, um, it will still be a signal in terms of um, the diminution of, of, uh, of religion and believing in God, because what is driving them here now, in quote, is not really believing God, if one might say, but some of the social um, accessories that go with that, uh, connection with people, and worshiping people, something that looks like you and all that. And it may not, you know, it may not actually be you know, necessarily uh, an indication. That's why they call it spirituality. Yes, they tend to call it spirituality. They were not even call it that going to worship a God. They talk in a sense of spirituality. Yes, for me, it's a quest of connection. And it's also a response to the sense of alienation they feel within the context of other religions. But I, but I think this is something that deserves more kind of scholarship and research, you know, uh, but this is just what I can say. Great. Ikram, you can go next, and I ask you that if you're not talking, you turn off your microphone, so there is no... You can go, Ikram. Uh, thank you. That was really a very um, formative um, chapter of the book. Um, actually, uh, my question might, might be related to the previous question. However, I just... Uh, my understanding of... Um, uh, when the colonization uh, happened in Africa and the missionary movement, like um, civilized people there to became Christian. Um, I don't know if um, um, Leo have any um, insight about the liberation movement and the globalization, uh, if they have any impact of, of like the way you mentioned going back to spirituality and worshiping certain different concept of God than the Abrahamic God or the Christian God. Uh, does globalization have any impact on that? And uh, liberation as well, liberation movement or liberal, liberal movement, let me say it in another word. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, um, thanks, Ekran, for that um, um, question and observation. Um, one of the things I've been trying to explore uh, in reflecting on atheism in, um, in, in, in Africa, Southern Africa, West Africa, is to what ex to the extent it is a liberation mechanism. Yes. And I want to say that what I'm going to say here is not exhaustive. And I, I keep saying I'm talking to scholars and the people who are interested in scholarship. So I feel it's something that deserves to be researched. Because when you look at the discussions, it is all about freeing oneself. Like now, people are trying to free themselves from the colonial gods and they want to go back to in quote, the traditional spiritualities that they connect with. They feel choked, they feel alienated. They feel that this gives them the space, the sense of dignity they, 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 you know, they, they are longing for. Has it any connection with um, liberation? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, but to what extent is something I cannot exhaustively answer here. But it, 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 there's always, because um, uh, being an atheist myself and working active, being very active in the atheist movement, I, I can relate to the fact that a lot of people, you know, um, sometimes, you know, they feel, they see uh, some of these tendencies as freeing themselves from what they think, you know, is, um, could be political, it could be cultural, uh, either bondage. Now, globalization, now when you say globalization, I really want to understand what that means in, in this context. Because for me, globalization uh, has to do with interconnectedness of the world. And again, sometimes um, it can makes I, us, okay. Maybe I just want to uh, specify particularly or uh, social media, let me say, social media and um, people are exposed more to, um, other schools or other um, gods or other religions. So let me just specify social media, which is a part of glo globalization, right? So yeah. my understanding of globalization, which is connected to the outsider. And here, let me specify uh, social media in general. Thank you. Yeah, and um, the thing is that for us to situate this, we have to ask ourselves, what's the situation of atheists or atheism? And what, what facility, what do social media offer? Now, atheists live in situations where sometimes they're shunned, they're restricted, they're suppressed. Of course, I have written some opinion articles and I hope also to do more research in this area to highlight the fact that, and as I noted in that, in that, in, in the, in that essay, is a subcultural, uh, is a subcultural phenomenon. So, so the, the, the social media is offering a space. The physical media is highly controlled. Yes. So the social media was offering a space for, for expression. So to that extent, globalization is, a, in quote, a liberating factor because it's trying to broaden the space of expression, assertion uh, of atheist and of atheistic ideas. So. Um, I think that, I mean, that, that's the much I can say in terms of the connection of social media. So it's been, it's been helping, it's been broadening the space of oppression and expression of atheists and atheistic thought. But I must also add that the threats are there, as we saw in Nigeria, that one could also, uh, you know, be policed and you can also end up in jail. In other words, the same kind of restriction in the physical space or in the non uh, um, virtual space. We are also seeing it going on there. And here now, you can actually, people can get at you from the UK. Somebody in the UK could come and threaten somebody in Nigeria and say, we'll get at you, and they will be able to work. So yes, offering some kind of assets for expression of atheism, but also there's also a kind of dangers and risk associated yeah, with that. That was great. There is a, uh, some comments in the chat. Bolalen uh, says, I don't think Christianity is about civilizing people. And then Ekram says, thank you, Bolalen. Colonization was all about civilizing the colonies by converting them to Christianity. Um, Tercia, if, yeah, I don't know, Leo, if you want to say something and, and or then 
Sorry, second goal. Yeah, I, I yes, I, I noted that you know the issue of civilization, and I think we need to begin to ask ourselves, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, if you say you're civilizing people, what does that mean? Um, yesterday I was reading about the concept of epist epistemic violence. Okay, when you unleash epistemic violence on a culture, are you civilizing them and, and all that? So, so um, if, and civilization from whose perspective? Yes. So I think that that's why I said that um, um, the African continent might have to be a graveyard of gods, you know, the death of gods. So I think that may also be the graveyard of those civilizations. So what do you mean by civilization? When you tell people to stop worshiping uh, their local gods and start worshiping the Jesus God or the Mohammedan God, is that civilization? So uh, that word is overrated. It's so used in such a way that for me, I don't think it means anything. So it's important we begin to ask ourselves, what is civilization? This is the argument used to legitimize you know, some of the uh, God formations from the West and from the East. Oh yeah, Africans are barbaric. Their gods are uh, animists, their spirits, as if other deities are something else, you know? So they try to use demeaning, you know, uh, uh, languages and terms and expressions and propositions to make a case and to legitimize there. So, and it's become, it is important we begin to problematize these concepts and, um, and uh, look, at, look at what they actually mean by civilization, unpack it, and of course, begin to highlight, you know, what was actually transpired in the name of civilization of the region. Darisia, do you want to go? Thank you, Guadalupe. I want to ask a, a question about the connection between criticizing religion, especially traditional religions and racism. So I, I, I'll give some background. I'm, I'm from South Africa. And as you can see, I'm a white woman. So, and I'm Afrikaans speaking. I'm an atheist and I'm, I'm an activist and committed atheist. And I find it very difficult to criticize a very harming belief that, that is very prevalent in, in and around the community that I live in. And that is the, the traditional healer um, idea. And these traditional healers are very much fused with Christian beliefs in, in South Africa and in particular in the Western Cape where I live. So I want to ask Leo about this, this idea, and I, it might not be as prevalent in other African countries as it is in South Africa with its very strong history of um, racism. So if I, as a white woman who is an atheist, um, who is actually now a minority, want to criticize the traditional beliefs, and um, I, I can maybe your audience, the audience might find it interesting. I actually went to visit one of these traditional healers, pretending that I wanted to make use of their services because I wanted to find out what they're about. And they're all about scamming people who believe in ancestors and that ancestors can influence what happens in your life. But I'm afraid that if I expose those people, that I could be called. Uh, sort of almost recolonizing because I'm a white African speaking woman. I would just like to get Leo's opinion on that. Um, thank you, Tessia, for this comment. And I must say upfront that the questions you guys are asking me are questions that are pushing me to make some activists, <laughs> give some activist replies. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be as careful as I can, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say what I think. What you have, what you just mentioned now, is one of the most critical aspects of atheism, atheistic manifestation in the region. And I thank you so much for drawing attention to it. Um, if I have said it, the woods accuse me of being normative in my scholarship. Look there is that threat of being accused of racism. There's a threat of being accused of uh, recolonization, neocolonization. There's also a, a threat of being accused of Islamophobia when you want to criticize Islam. So it, let, let's not just restrict it to traditional religion. And it is important that we begin to look at these uh, developments, issues, within the larger scholarship of religion. 
and non-religion, especially in the region. So you run that risk. I want to, I want to tell you that, uh, you know, and all that, but it should not be the case. But the question there now is, should we allow the scam to continue because we don't want to call racists? The same thing applies to me. I speaking to you here. A lot of people think that my PhD is a waste because I go around pursuing witch hunters and try to put them in jail because they're criminals. Yes. So, and I ask myself that question. So for me, it's going to be a personal decision as to should you do this in pursuant of truth or what you think is the truth or what you think is harming the society or should you just, because of what they will call you, now refrain from doing what you think is supposed to be done. For me, you know, as a Nigerian and as a black person, I don't care. <laughs> yes, I want to tell you from my perspective, I don't care. Call me whatever you want to call me. I visit them. I go to those uh, sangomas locally. They are scammers. Yes, I know that this is not a term. I hope I'm not making Nathan uncomfortable or Guada. I'm not making them uncomfortable. But let me let me let you guys understand. I visit these people. And I go there to try to get knowledge. And I come out with a different kind of understanding of what is going on. And for how long are we going to keep quiet? OK, let me give you one example. I was at a conference, and I, somebody made a claim. And if a priest said that if I could cure HIV and AIDS, I, was, I went mad. I was very uncomfortable. So I pulled a professor. I said, look, this man is talking nonsense, OK? So he told me, please, please, please don't, you know, I shouldn't expose him that I want to remove food from his mouth. That what he's doing is profiting him. He feeds from it. So I should not, you know, do this. So I find myself in similar situations. But the question there is, yeah, you have, we have to make a choice. Yes, we have to make a choice. Should we allow this to continue because they will call us names? what they will call you an Islamophobe or they call you a neo-colonialist or they call you a racist? I think the answer is no. Yes, I, I think the answer is no. But I, I know very well that this is not um, strictly the forum to discuss that, uh, but I'm happy offline you know, to discuss it when I put on my activist cap so that we can explore ways to make sure that you know, we will continue to do what we think should be done. Great. Uh, so there is a still a really interesting uh, conversation discussion going on in the chat. Bolang says civilizing means bring a place or people to a stage of social and cultural development considered to be more advanced. Assuming we were civilized by Europeans in East condescending Africans who were already civilized. And Necrom says, from a perspective of colonization, I don't agree with it, but that is what took place, unfortunately. Okay, noted. Yeah. Uh, Mehmet, do you want to go? Yeah, uh, so I have a just question. Thank you, Leo, for your presentation, by the way. So in your book chapter, you mentioned that the religious criticism transformed into a battle with the gods. So, and I can understand that you're kind of a atheist activist, whatever you call yourself. So I wonder, like, is the case for all the people that you have studied or kind of, let's say, interviewed, etc. Uh, or it is just some part of the people, because also in Turkey, we have the atheists, or we have some different knowledge groups. So we call them like, I don't know, they're like active atheists, and they directly fight with the religious or with the religious groups, etc., or religious ideologies. And there are also certain kind of non-religious people or kind of atheist people or deist agnostic people, and who are just ignore the religion or anything religious. So rather than looking at the religion as a kind of ideology, they just ignore and they just are not religious. They live, their lifestyle is non-religious or they have kind of a non-religious positions. So is it the only, like what you portrayed in your chapter is just one part of the, let's say the group that you have studied or it is the whole picture of the African case that you have studied? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, well, if you look at the chapter, I didn't, all, I didn't also know, I didn't uh, only mention criticism of religion. I also talked about religious indifference. Okay, yeah. So 
And that's why I am saying that this chapter is just an invitation to come and study what is an exciting topic. And, and um, yeah, let me say, it. move away from this boring, uh, uh, Africans are deeply religious, notoriously religious, and come and look at another dynamic aspect. There are a lot of people who don't care about religion, who want to just live their lives, like you said. They are not interested. And even the, the, those who are involved in the criticism of religion are just a tiny bit of you know, the segment of the atheist population. So just like you have them in talk, we also have them here. They, actually, many of them, we say they are not joiners, they, that they left religion, they don't want to join <laughs> atheist group again. And a lot of them don't want to also get involved in either in um, issues with, they just ignore. It's just ignore and allow religious people to go away. So sometimes they will ask the activists, why not ignore? Why not leave them? They know that, of course, it doesn't make sense to them and all meaning. So, so the uh, what I have, the, my chapter is just to whet the appetite and let people begin to look at another aspect of Africa that is often ignored or that is often painted with the religious brush because the phenomenon is diffused or people are not so very active. So there are a lot of people. Now, look at Botswana, Namibia, and all that. They have significant number in their census who identify as non-religious, but they don't really have you know, very active and vibrant organizations as such. So at the end of the day, these are those who, when you give them the census box, they will just tick non-religious and, they, and they're quietly in their homes doing their things. So there's a lot of people who are very quiet in their own approach to, uh, uh, you quote, atheism or non-religion, or and uh, there are also people who are very active. And I want to say that those who are very active are actually a tiny segment within the atheistic uh, community. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think there is a question from Success UK. Uh, it's just to make a comment about the non-religion aspect of, uh, I mean, Christianity, non-Christianity uh, non aspect of religion. I think when you think about it in this social media age, is that I think a lot of people are becoming more atheist because of the judgment that some of us face from Christianity, because in terms of Christianity, you're not supposed to judge, you're not supposed to criticize. So basically yeah. what I'm trying to say is that a lot of people are becoming more atheists because of the judgment that they receive from it's like in terms of the bible you're not supposed to judge but there's a lot of people that judge you based on things you wear or things that you say or just just being yourself and not everybody wants to you know uh be in a group of people that they judge you on every little things that you do Yes, I know that if you commit sin, you're gonna go to hellfire, but the way Christianity does it, it makes you get fed up and not to talk about the scam. Like they will tell you, oh, do this, uh, you know, the Lord will bless you a thousand fold. It's just, I don't, like, I don't like that, you know? And now, uh, now people, are, I think people are becoming more understanding of themselves and then trying to, I, they just, I think it's just the judgmental aspect of it. That's why people are running away from, from Christianity. Okay. I think that's just, that's a comment. And uh, I noted that. There is a question in the chat from Ekram. Is it legal by law in some African countries to be atheist? Yeah, well, I think that, you know, I will speak from the Nigerian perspective and, um, and I guess our friends from South Africa could also say that uh, what we have here is a uh, guarantees. There is no nothing like saying, okay, it's legal to be traditionalist or be specific. No, we have uh, provisions and constitution that grant guarantees freedom of religion, I believe. And within that framework, we have people with all sorts of religious, irreligious beliefs. So that's what we have here. But of course, we have this blasphemy law. Uh, which um, often is used by the majority, religious majority, to oppress the minority. But Nigeria is an interesting place where the religion is, that is majority in the North is in the minority in the South. So what they don't tolerate in the North, we tolerate it in the South. 
and all that. So, um, so it, it, you, you can be an atheist, but it depends on to what extent and where you are and which religion is dominant and what and what can the laws do in terms of implementing you know, what is in the constitution. There is another question from Bolelang. Okay, talking about Christianity and civilization, uh, I would like to bring in an important point here. Christianity actually makes people to be superstitious and not to use their faculties to solve their own problems. Would we call that development or regression? Well, um, I think that you, it depends on, like I said, how you define it, you know? How, what do you mean by civilization? That's why I said, we need to really define that. And, um, and from there, if it means, like you said, people being unable to, you know, use their mental powers and civilization is, de is defined as being able to use one mental powers. So you cannot call that civilization. So what I'm saying here, it depends on what you, you what you mean by civilization, and um, and of course, if we are to go by what is written there, yes, uh, there's always this idea that okay, Africa is on the dark side, backward, barbaric, Christianity is from the West, enlightened, educated, excellent, perfect, divine, and all that. So there's this black and white, good and bad kind of uh, 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 approach to the cultural uh, relationships. And of course, one would know that definitely is not the case. I mean, you move in, you know, stop. Like, like I, I responded at a meeting where somebody says that, um, yes, that they brought a, uh, sorry, the, this is not civilization. They have taken away the civilization, which is power court here. So sorry, the light went off. <laughs> so, so then what, hap what happened was that uh, they, they, were they were mentioning the, the fact that um, there was this, um, that Christianity brought civilization. I said, they just changed one superstition to another superstition. So what is it? You know, from believing in the Christian superstition, you, know, you, you are told to leave the indigenous superstition and accept the Christian superstition. And I was telling them that that is not a civilization. So it depends on how you define, like I said, civilization. And um, what of if Africans had gone to Europe and said, okay, stop worshiping the Jesus God and I accept the 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 Sangoma god or accept the Nigerian or do Yoruba gods and things like that would they have called that civilization yeah so we need to unpack that and at the end of the day we might think that what is civilization is actually not civilization yeah okay I think we have time for one more question Lauren great thank you so much you can hear me okay I have different headphones and okay, awesome. Um, so my question is um, a bit of a clarification question. I thought it was interesting when you said atheistic impulses kind of um, are part of state responses to the commercialization of religion. Um, and sometimes what you have in those instances is a bit of this sort of binary of like good religion and bad religion. So it's that you're doing religion the wrong way we need to be doing religion the right way. So it's not necessarily anti-religion, it's anti what's perceived as bad religion. But it seems like what's happening in this context is it actually is kind of a shift or move away from religion and totality. Is that is that correct? Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, my, my presentation is trying to look at atheistic currents, atheistic sentiments what developments within the region, within the religious space, within religious discourses are providing framework for people to question, uh, uh, question the God idea, express disbelief in God idea, challenge God idea, dismiss the God idea. So because even within the Christian fold, some people will tell you those people are not worshiping God. Yeah, that these people are scammers, that those who are turning. So what, what, what by, I understand what you're saying that, yeah, if there is like a discussion, in terms of those who are doing the right religion and those who are doing it rightly and those who are doing it wrongly. Yes, but the question there remains that at the end of the day, it provided a framework for a kind of discussion about gods and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the existence. Are they active? Are they working with this 
prophets? Are they present in these churches and things like that? So if it was like, uh, not strictly yes, atheistic, but something that, you know, um, uh, discussion, the discourses, you will see atheistic strands and propositions, claims and counterclaims being made. That was really, really great, Leo. Thank you so much. It was very engaging. And thank you, everyone, for being here, for asking questions. I'm really glad that we got to have this very interesting uh, discussion here. And Leo, your presentation was great. So thank you again for being here. OK, goodbye, everyone. And thank you again. And thank you, Leo. Yeah, thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, bye.